what's happened by Gadding staying there, but Bale is off. He's bowling first ball, lethal. cold April morning, the 1993 Australian touring team land in England to start their campaign to defend the coveted ashes. shock the traditionalists, the new season also sees a remodelled Sunday league, introducing coloured clothing, black side screens and a white ball. Also in April, with a new owner, the generous American multi-millionaire philanthropist John Paul Getty, and a new editor, Wisdom publishes the 130th edition of its famous Almanac. Amongst other things, it reflects the new 17-match, four-day county championship. In May, a razor-sharp cut removes Graham Gooch's designer stubble. Several more cuts, and Gooch records his undisputed 100th hundred against Cambridge University at Fenners. The opening one-day game at Old Trafford is notable for the first international appearances of Graham Thorpe and Andrew Caddick for England, and of 21-year-old Matthew Hayden for Australia. When you uh, give a medium pace of the charge, then it shows you've got plenty of confidence in what you're trying to do. 11 off the over so far. Well fielded. Not only well fielded, <laughs> it was a cat. Brilliant. Wonderful reflex stuff. That went back like a bullet. Steve War couldn't believe it. Telescopic left hand, left arm and uh, he bagged it. Merv's got him for the big one. Australia's final score of 258 for nine on a good pitch is a surmountable target for England, but they never recover from a poor start despite spirited contributions from Hick, Fairbrother and Thorpe. Oh, well caught. Very well caught. And the first wicket goes down. Gooch has gone. Wonderful catch. He saw Chris Lewis pull one off for England, but my word, Craig McDermott, he did so well, low, left-handed. And what a terrific sequence of balls, the one that was shorter and made Robin Smith hop, and then this one then bring him into the stroke on the front foot. That's the 100. And the second 50 has come at a real lick because 50 came up in the 15th over, we're only in the 23rd, and England now 103. Well, that's a cracking stroke. Be very close to the shot of the day from Neil Fairbrother. There's Brian Robson in the middle of that picture, and uh, oh, he's out! A cracking shot, flicked the fingers of Steve Waugh, and immediately and instinctively, he knew that Lewis was out. Now six from two balls, so it's got to be a boundary. Oh, 
just got to be run out. And the Australians have won. Two days later, the teams meet in Birmingham. Border again winning the toss and putting England in to face the inform Craig McDermott. What a great ball. That was the one that darts back off the seam and it stranded Stewart. That's a splendid breakthrough by McDermott and by Australia. Stewart is gone. Oh, that, what a delivery. Just a couple of balls to go before McDermott's finished and he's finally got reward. What a catch. That's absolutely brilliant. Mark Taylor, who has made a name for himself in Australia, taking fiercely hit drives, has pulled that from nowhere. Well played. Another crunching shot. Big hit. It's up along the broadcasting boxes here. And I'll swear that uh, it wasn't much more than the short arm jab. Hughes won't get that either. And Smith's having no trouble picking the slow ball from Steve Waugh and he's just racing away with this game. He's gone to 150 now. It's a phenomenal innings. The awesome power of Robin Smith's stroke play has surely ensured that England have a winning total. But Mark Waugh and Alan Border, with a clinical, brilliant partnership, expose England's all-seam attack. That's a good shot. There'll be another boundary. Cork is the bowler and Border has got him away over mid-wicket. With the Texaco series already decided, the teams travel south for the final one-day international at Lords. Border stands down. England stubbornly omit Lethwell and put Australia in. There's a claim there and gone. What a good catch. That really was a fine effort. And Matthew Hayden goes. Good catch by Stewart. Oh, that's good. That is good. It would have uh, frightened hell out of first slip as he went across. Oh, that's the very best of uh, David Boone. Beautifully played. So Mark Taylor comes down the pitch and makes room to hit the ball on the side of the field where there are the four fielders. Well, that was well played and brilliantly stopped. Oh, this might be a wicket, should be. And is. <laughs>
England's safe fielding gives the home supporters hope of a victory, especially when Graham Gooch and Alex Stewart start with 96 in 23 overs. Beautifully timed. Good pace from two straight past Martin, but the timing was quite superb. Fetch that. Given him. Has he given him? Yes, he has. Yes, he has. One of the great oddities in cricket that we've seen a man stumped off a wide. Now, the judgment of a wide leg side is much stricter in one day cricket. Healy's done his job, and Bird's done his, and Roy Palmer's about to do his. Hayden. <laughs> well, in the end, he got it. It came in very quickly, and he was partly looking into the sun, misjudged it slightly, and then took an absolute blinder. And here he has got it. Hughes has taken the wicket. So Australia have won the series 3-0. The men of the series, Robin Smith for England and Craig McDermott for Australia. The B&H competition is being played for the first time as a straight knockout competition. In the first round, Lancashire and Surrey meet at the Oval in what turns out to be an extraordinary match. Lancashire make 236 and Surrey with Stewart and Thorpe in command are coasting to a comfortable victory. Such a good shot. And that's a well deserved wicket. Now, Wasimakram from the Vauxhall end, and he'll bowl to Monty Lynch. And he's gone. Well. He's come on and rolled his arm over and picked up the wicket down the leg side. Got him! What a good catch! Ian Austin. Oh, that's close. It's out. Went right across the crease trying to pump the ball away to leg. And Austin has claimed another wicket. Panic as trumps in the remainder of the over. A beautifully bowled. That's good sensible bowling by Ian Austin. Jamie and the Yorker into the block hole. Mark Butcher has gone. 220 for seven. And this is a sensational performance from Lancashire. Yes, by six runs, Lancashire have achieved the most unlikely of victories. On May the 23rd, Dennis Compton, the dashing brill cream boy who lit up the drab days after the Second World War, celebrates his 75th birthday at Lord's. Across London, at the Oval on the 27th, another immortal batsman, Sir Leonard Hutton, is being honoured by the unveiling of a brick sculpture to commemorate his record-breaking 364 for England against Australia in 1938. 
June sees the long-awaited start of the Ashes series with a memorable first match at Old Trafford. Graham Gooch wins the toss and asks Australia to bat on a surface made damp by Manchester rain, with such Caddick and Michael Slater making their test debuts. That's a fine shot. It really is on a slow pitch like that, and to pick the length and play such uh, an incisive stroke with a straight bat. And that's scored the over five duck balls and uh, suddenly concedes three. It brings up the hundred for Australia. And he's gone. The top edge. The freighters might well smile because it wasn't much of a ball, but anything that gets a wicket is well worthwhile. He's gone, he's gone, he's gone, second attempt. Wow, I thought he dropped it, so did David Boone. The Taylor's down the track again. That's good timing. He didn't really put a great deal of effort into that. Uh, Philip Tufnell to Mark War. And he's got him caught and bowled, and in a manner I've seen War for before, Tuffman just slowed it up. It held up in the pitch, and War wasn't there. Taylor's gone too. Caught and bowled. On the drive again, and Such has picked up the wicket. Despite this loss of wickets late in the day, Mark Taylor's first century for 21 tests has put Australia in a competitive position on a turning pitch exploited well by Tufnell and especially Peter Such. Oh, there's a lovely shot. away and England very much on top here this morning and that's going to be out if Defreitas can make it yes got it top edge from Merv Hughes Defreitas behind square got him Chris Lewis brilliant well, what a way to finish off the innings, and that shows you when a side has got confidence, things start to run their way. Peter Such there, six wickets, but that last one, it won't carry his name in the scorebook, but all down to Chris Lewis. He's out. That's what's good about it, I'm afraid. Now for one of the most pivotal moments of the whole series, perhaps the most important ball of the summer, Shane Warne's first ball in an Ashes test. He has a top spinner and he also has a flipper. First ball. Now what's happened? Mike Gadding staying there. The bail is off. He's bowled him. Gatting can't believe it, Dickie Bird, I suppose, can believe it. First ball, lethal. So I think for a moment that Mike Gatting must have felt that it, uh, it perhaps hit the, the keeper and went back onto the stumps. It was a perfectly pitched leg spinner, pitching just outside leg with a little bit of curve, and that's a beautiful delivery. Not a bad one to start with. And he's done it. Brilliantly done. Two great deliveries have given Warren two wickets. One to get Gadding. Flick the off stump, and now Robin Smith taking a slip. Wide of mid on. Oh. 
Beautifully placed. You won't see anything better than that. Oh, a brilliant catch. It was a trap ball. It was short, it was wide, it asked to be belted, it was belted. And Alan Border held on to it. Alex Stewart picked that up very cleanly. Stewart has displayed better footwork than probably anybody else against, uh, against Shane Warne. Oh, to Nia! Oh, brilliant! What a sensational catch. Oh, beautifully bowled. Big swinger. That really was a gorgeous piece of swing bowling. Stewart goes for 27, and that's England's last chance of getting uh, anything over 200, you would think. England's batting has been undone on the second day by the skill and sheer audacity of Warne and the unremitting hostility of Merv Hughes. There goes, and last man out, Phil Tufnell. Just took evasive action there. It didn't look as though that got up anywhere near the amount he thought it would. Oh, that must be close. And that's out. Very well up. It might actually have caught Mark Taylor without bouncing. He certainly moved across in front of his stumps to play the shot, and... Uh... And he's gone. Such has his second wicket. Slater is caught by Paddock at mid-on. Down the track, trying to loft over the top, and uh, he'll have plenty of time to think about whether or not that was a good thing to attempt. There we are, there's the Super Tram, which is the old Warwick Road station. The war has dealt with that beautifully. That's a terrific hit. Not dissimilar to the one earlier in the over, except he hit it upwards and at the same time brought up his half century. him, got himself into a real tangle, did war, right on the stroke of T, two or three minutes to go. Well, a blast from the past, or one from the present, or they hope for the future. The lead is exactly 300. That's perfectly timed. On a pitch now playing very easily, Australia's stars are very much in the ascendancy. Oh, now then. Well, well, well. Well, it, it wasn't costly in the end. No sort of shot at all from Alan Board, and that's Andrew Caddick's first test wicket. And he's gone. The Freitas has struck, Boom is gone. And just like chalk and cheese, England yesterday afternoon and England this morning, completely different approach and they've picked up the wickets of those two batsmen who did so well yesterday. You're going over the wicket and you give a batsman that sort of room. 
when you've got a problem, and that's 50 and a very good one. Yes, they've got two uh, ideal players out there to get move on. Steve Waugh, good stroke maker, terrific runner between wickets. Right between them. <laughs> Absolutely, that's the way the game is going. What a way to get there. What a way to get there. No wonder. Look at that. Rodney Marsh was the last Australian wicketkeeper to get 100. In fact, it might even be now. And it is. England aren't aware of it. Gooch perhaps doesn't want to hear about it. Feels very fast now. Oh, well bowled. Beautifully bowled. That's a classic for Warren. Any leg spinner who's played Test match cricket would be absolutely delighted with that type of dismissal. Fifty to Graham Gooch, he struck the ball beautifully. Looks confident. Very important innings. Oh, dear me. As close as you can get without actually being out. Got it. Well, money for old Rolf, isn't it? Short, outside leg stump, just sat up and said, hit me. And Graham Gooch in this form has whacked it. The final delivery of the day being faced by Mike Gatting. We'll be rest assured that he'll be pressured. Border will be back at bat pad. We painted a picture about Hughes and Gatting. Was he expecting a short one? No matter. And suddenly, and there is Gatting's reaction, the whole balance of the game changes in that one ball, the final, final delivery of the day. That's it. Beautifully hammered away by Graham Gooch. This is eminently the best of Graham Gooch, the captain who leads by example. Oh, that's out. He didn't read it. It looked the googly to me. I don't know. We'll just take another look at that, but... Oh, wow. We well, what happened there? What happened there? He's been given out. Handled the ball. There we see, it bounces up. It look, looks as if it's going on top of the stumps, on top of the bales. He gives a rather cheeky little punch. Oh, what a good ball. What a good ball. He's got that one. And the clapping. Turns into cheers. Shane Warne just thinking now, where did he take that one from? Out. And that is probably the end of the match because that was a perfect leg break, which Chris Lewis didn't cover. That's the end of him for 43.
Caught him. Caught him, what a wonderful catch. That really was. And that was always the possibility when Hughes went round the wicket that Andrew Caddick, who's played so well and so courageously, faced with a different line, wouldn't be able to keep that sort of delivery down. Got him, and all over. Murph Hughes gets the fourth wicket, and a stump. It had been a magnificent test match, with Shane Warne shading Hughes as man of the match. 60 years after his part in the 1932-33 Bodyline series, the Hughes of his day, if you like, minus the histrionics, the 88-year-old Harold Larwood, the great Nottinghamshire fast bowler, was belatedly awarded an MBE in the Queen's June birthday honours. Also in June, Graham Hick, at 27, becomes the youngest man ever to reach 20,000 first-class runs, a record previously held by Wally Hammond. Lords, as always, is the venue for the second Ashes Test. Border wins the toss and bats, Australia bring in May for Julian, and England gamble quixotically by replacing De Freitas with Foster. With the first ball of the second over, Neil Foster is the bowler, Michael Slater is taking strike, and so far no runs are on the ball. Well, not the comeback you'd have wanted. Slow outfield, otherwise that would certainly have raced away. It still got there. That boundary uh, always looks shorter, but the slope there takes the ball on its way. That's a big hit. Takes Taylor to fifty. Ninety nine. What a moment for a young man. 162 now. And there it is. Wonderful. Punches the air. The dressing room will acknowledge. The crowd will. And you just won't see a better 100 than that. Very elated young man and thoroughly deserved the reception from the crowd. Slater and Mark Taylor continue to show how aesthetically pleasing, good, orthodox, positive batting can be. And that's it. It was a no ball, but Taylor ran the ball back at the square on the offside, and that's his 10th Test match century. Got him, and that is the area where England have been half expecting a catch. Standing ovation at Lords in his first test match. That's a great moment, Ian. And well bowled. Good test of temperament for Phil Tufnell, and he stood up to it. The Australians gave him some real hammer early on. And now he's struck back. The first day had been uplifted by young Michael Slater's uninhibited stroke play. Could England satisfy their supporters on the second by bowling more effectively against Australia's middle order? Oh, there's Mark War at his best. We saw Boone in the previous over. This was classical. Getting better and better for Boone. <laughs> is gone. 
well, well, well. Mark Wall. On the edge of a first test century in England. It would have been his fourth. Alas, it's 99. His teammates are anxious. And uh, Alan Border will be in the traps and ready. That's it. Well, a fighting hundred, a gutsy one. One completely different in style and character to that of Taylor and Slater. Well, that a bit of Larry Dooley, I can tell you. Lewis has the wicket. Australia batted on into the third day, declaring at 632 for four, knowing that they'd be without Craig McDermott, who'd been rushed to hospital for an abdominal operation on the previous evening. Oh, dismissive. Only a short arm jab. That's in the air. He caught it. A lump of turf came up. It looked for all the world like the ball dropping out of the hands, but that was a super catch. We try and play now in the second over after lunch. There are two runs added and Tim May is bowling to Mike Gatting. That one had better go. Good cutter, Mike Gatting. Oh, it's bowled in. Almost the sucker ball, tossed up, just outside off stump and through the gate on the drive. And really, that's uh, a pretty ordinary dismissal as far as the batsman's concerned, but all credit to the bowler. <laughs> Wonderfully well done by Healy. You have to be certain whether or not the bat is on the ground. Robin Smith was a long way out, then made the effort to get back. Healy took it beautifully. Did all the right things, and the bat is still in the air, or is it? That's one of the problems with television. Is the bat actually in the air, or has it reached the ground? Robin Smith is out. Give him. It looks to me as if this ball, even from the stump vision, is going down. And I think if I was batting, I'd be very upset with that. Catch! Given him. <laughs> Foster stood, couldn't believe it. Merv Kitchen, umpire Kitchen had no doubt. And that is the seventh wicket. Foster having been caught by Border off the bowling of Warren. Oh, that's bowled him. Bowled him back onto the stumps. Bale comes off, and the ploy of going round the wicket seems to have unsettled Mike Atherton, ended his innings, and caused him problems all through the over. It's the end of a good innings, a gutsy innings. Bowled by Warren for 80, 174 for eight. Early on the fourth morning, England are all out for 205, and they follow on. 427 runs behind. There's more runs. <laughs> oh, that is close. Umpire Kitchen saying no. And he wasn't... He wasn't forward at all. Oh, well bowled. 
That is an absolute classic delivery. He would lie awake dreaming night after night to be able to bowl that ball against one of the greatest players in the world to have it find the outside edge and take his wicket. need to see if this got through and hit the helmet yes it did so then we have five let's help yourself <laughs> runs 98 99, will they go for the third? He's fallen, he's slipped down. Oh, tragedy, tragedy. Absolute nightmare. Unbelievable joy for Australia. Atherton wanted the third, was sent back, slipped and fell, and just couldn't struggle to his feet. He's caught him, he's gone, he's walking. Never happy against the spin. Tim May's return to the pavilion end brought the reward. And again, he wafts that away in the air. So he decided that if it's pitched up, Much depends on Mike Gatty, but not for the first time, the marginal decisions seem to go against England. Oh, that's well bowled. That is a great delivery. He's defeated Gatting, he didn't pick it. Gosh, that's good deception. Well, Gatting will be very disappointed with that out for 59. shot as well. <laughs> Terrific shot was this. Now what does Hughes do now? That's one. <laughs> Lovely little bit of byplay there. Merv Hughes, big bad Merv saying go on then hook that one. That's got to go. That's uh, as genuine a half volley as you can get. There's also a bit of width in it, and that's Graham Hicks 50. Oh, beautifully bowled. That's a top spinner. Tim May has produced a glorious delivery there. Defeated Graham Hick. Found the outside edge with the one that went across his body. That is really good bowling. Adam Smith, one of the England team. The spectator at the moment behind the uh, Australian supporters group. Oh dear me. What is going on? That beautifully bold, I hasten to say. But why on earth would you want to do that at any time, let alone five minutes before lunch? Nice uh, hit space. 
and with the timing. England captain Graham Gooch, just on the left of um, Her Majesty as you look at your picture. Yes, yes, I'm not at all surprised at that. That was the top spinner. And that's it, all over. Australia win. Lords lucky for Australia again. Michael Slater is named man of the match and they go two up in the series. For the third test at Trent Bridge, England threw out the old and brought in five young players, Hussein, Eilert, Lathwell, McCaig and Thorpe. Australia were forced to replace the sick McDermott with Brendan Julian. Gooch won the toss and chose to bat on a misty midsummer Nottingham morning. That's the straight we've been told about. Lathwell's favourite shot, way through cover point. That's a good delivery, and uh, yes, he's given him out there. That did bounce a little, move away from him, and well, Lathwell's gone. Merv Hughes has bowled a couple of deliveries like that that have moved away off the seam. And that one slightly extra bounds, and a straightforward catch for Healy, the wicketkeeper. What, just ten minutes since lunch? That is a beautifully placed shot. You will not see anything better than that for footwork. That's four more. Oh, well, he really will be upset at that, Stuart. That spun a long way, it was what did him. And Warner's got through again. The over-the-wrist spinner, the big spinner, can do that sort of thing. Batsman's eyes light up when they see something a bit offline, a little bit short. And they give it some tremendous hammer. Oh, well, what do you think of that? That is the mark of a very, very good young cricketer. He's a brilliant fielder, he's already shown that with uh, picking up, chasing and throwing and that is one of the more brilliant catches you will ever see. Shot. Beautiful square drive. Lovely turn of the wrist there. It's quite deliberately placed precisely into that section. It's in the air. Caught it. Steve Ward, the goalie. That's Merv Hughes at his best. Uh, apparently plain and innocuous for a few balls and suddenly whipped it in short, asked the best the batsman an entirely different question. And unfortunately for Graham Thorpe, he just didn't have the answer. Oh, and Gooch has gone. Alan Border comes in and Hughes has done it again. Two little appeals from Shane Warne, or rather one big one followed by one nearly as large because <laughs> he's diddled him again. Yes, I thought this turned back, but I thought it did too much actually.
England were all out for 321 early on the second morning, Smith 86, their highest first innings total of the series so far. Their four inexperienced bowlers, only nine test wickets between them, had something to bowl at. to the short pitch delivery. Well bowled, that's out. We talked about judging length, well... Michael Slater... rather indeterminate footwork, perhaps. Wonderful stroke. Absolutely wonderful stroke. Now that could be out. Yes, well caught. Well caught, nicely judged. That's out. Thorpe takes the catch. First wicket, and he's deserved that. Oh, well done. That moved a long way off the pitch, went away off the seam, and Julian just managed to get the outside edge to it. Good catch by Alex Stewart. That'll be it. That'll be the hundred. 16th for David Boone for Australia. His fifth against England, second in successive test matches. that away through extra cover. And that's out. <clears throat> and Border is gone. 356 for nine now. And that's out. The second new ball does the trick. What they got to decide there was any edge, or did the leg get outside the off stump? Well, the umpire, no doubt. Well, there again. Big shout. Oh, he's given him. Umpire May has given him. Michael Atherton stood there. And I think he was wondering whether it actually carried to the keeper. As he goes round it. On the back, quite clear there, he hit it to me. That's a better shot. He only got one for it. But he got himself, I think, in the naked eye anyway, nicely inside that. Oh, that's close. That is close, no shot played. David Boone at short square legs got head up about that one. <laughs> Robin Smith's 50. <laughs> up they go, and Smith is gone. Beautifully bold. Oh, that must be close. Uh, yes, it's out, and I'm afraid the wiles of Shane Warne were much too much for Mark Lathwell. Oh, 
that's out. That's Plum. Alex Stewart has to go. Umpire Barry Mayer has given him LBW to Hughes. Ball of very full length, probably the attempt at Yorker. I'm not certain if it uh, got through at Yorker length. At the end of the day's play, Australia was censored by referee Clive Lloyd for bad language and questioning decisions. Say, Raymond, I've, I've, Shane Warne has been pulled more often in this match than in any of the previous two tests. He's out. Having said that, that was well bowled. Actually, got up a little bit. This is a testing moment. 111 runs ahead. Good shot. Well, that'll uh, help Graham Thorpe, no doubt. That's the one he'll wait for. Brilliant hit. Jumped all over that one. Got it away through mid-wicket for six. Now, we were talking about Hughes and thinking there might be a, a groin problem, which uh, I think the pictures confirm. Well, drinks interval everywhere. It looks as though Hughes goes. Now, that is a sad blow for Australia. Oh, watch it, watch it, watch it. Look at that ball. Wow, did the ball hit the stumps? Did the ball rest against the stumps? Well, that might be it. And is wonderful effort. Graham Gucci's 19th Test 100 as 11th World Captains of England and the sixth in the last two years. Well, look at that one go. Oh, well bowled. That's spun a lot. Nothing good really could do about that. I suppose he needn't have played it, but uh, he's trying to force the pace a bit now, trying to play more balls than he would have before T. Not the shot, the shot was terrific. But uh, very ordinary bowling. <laughs> well, he's got it with a bounce. The fielder came in, thought for a moment he might be able to catch it, changed his mind, and the bounce. England declared at 422 for six, setting Australia 371 to win in a minimum of 78 overs. That's a terrific shot. So compact and so quick. I mean, reflexes were perfect and the minimum of movement. All in. Beaten in the flight. Now, I wonder if he just hit over it a bit or did it spin between bat and pad? Looked to say there was a slight gap. him is exactly as predicted and Mark Taylor goes and uh, suddenly the game comes alive well Andrew 
Paddock's doing part of it there. Looks as though it might have been an inside edge from Mark Waugh, but Paddock has got through. And the Australians now 75 for three. Got him. Well bowled. Paddock has done it again. Porter was trying to get the bat out of the way and succeeded only to the extent that I suspect we'll see the ball ran off the face of the bat. Oh, that's close, it's out. Yes, he's gone, David Boone has gone. Oh, that is close as well. And he's given him. Stands there, but he's got to go, Ian Healy. Took a long time to think about that, Roy Palmer. Keith Fletcher there. He knows he's so near to getting back into this series. Big shot there. Good shot. Over pitched and uh, nice little bit of room outside off stump. Oh dear, that poor fella had a nasty bang then. When you feel behind the rope, you, you must expect the ball to hop up. This is, this is, this is a uh, Bob a job week to how to help. <laughs> What's your problem, mate? Oh, I played too many games in the field without my helmet on. Wow, what a shot that is in you trying to save the game. Jeffrey, talk me through that one. 50 as well. One of his colleagues in the Australian dressing room was saying, What a wonderful shot! Was he hitting? Though the early collapse was heartening but deceptive, thanks to Julian and Steve Waugh, Australia survived comfortably. But England had halted a run of seven successive defeats and restored some lost pride. Graham Thorpe was named man of the match. Against the traditions of county cricket, past ill feeling between Derbyshire and Lancashire spilled over into the final of the Benson and Hedges Cup. The ball called by umpire Barry Mayer. Been very, very painful. Intelligently bold, slow one. Big full toss from the slow left armer's first delivery, and Mike Atherton, a slightly unfamiliar role out on the cover boundary. Slide Derbyshire down. had had a poor start, but marvellously spirited batting from Dominic Cork and Tim O'Gorman came to the rescue, helped by some jittery fumbles by Lancashire in the field. Oh, one more. Superb. That's the second time he just leaned onto the front foot. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Oh, dear me. Well, I saw Viv Richards play that shot here once. Wonderful bit of improvisation. A catch. Very good reactions from Chris Adams. And down to his left side, it was his left shoulder blade that uh, got hit by a full toss from Wesley Macram earlier in the day. It's in the air. Three, three guys after it. Two of them are going to crash. Yes, Derbyshire also had their painful fielding lapses, but their accurate bowling never allowed Lancashire to keep up with the run rate, despite a characteristically aggressive innings from Neil Fairbrother. Final ball. He's it away, and Derbyshire win. First time they have won this Benson and Hedges competition.
On the 19th of July, Ian Botham decides to bring his remarkable career to a close, saying the body has decided that enough is enough. The king is dead, long live the king perhaps, as son Liam Botham, still a schoolboy, starts his cricket career with Hampshire second eleven. Graham Gooch loses the toss and England again take the field with four inexperienced bowlers, this time with just five caps between them. LBW. Bicknell has his first wicket and the partnership is broken. Oh! Through. He's walking and <laughs> head down at the end of a great innings. He really was a super good at bowling as well. found some very strange ways to get out in the series. Gee, that's well played. Lovely square drive. I'm sure on the replay that'll show a beautifully angled bat just at the moment of impact. There it is. Doesn't make the same mistake twice in uh, missing a square cut. Although McKay made the same mistake twice in giving him the opportunity. That's another lovely innings from David Boone. Steve Orr, 72, Alan Border, 98. Oh, beautifully played, and that's it. That's a century for the Australian captain. It's the England captain who has to do the chasing down to extra cover, but that's a fine century by Alan Border. Dogged, determined. Maybe four more. Takes him on to 98. That should be it. For nearly 25 minutes, Steve Waugh's been on 98, but that's it. Lovely 100. Brother Mark. Good shot. Wonderful stroke from Alan Border to bring up his 150. That's the 600. Well, they're looking for the six. It's there somewhere. On his 40th birthday, Gooch and his England team are booed off the field by some of the Yorkshire Selection crowd at the end of the day's five. play. Generous applause from a 399 deliveries and uh, the first 100 came off 222 and the next one off 177 and that's it, the closure. Wonderful innings from uh, just about the most durable cricketer you could ever imagine. Alan Border and Steve Waugh, don't forget him. 157 not out, he's batted uh, on this ground now. Twice for big scores without getting out. The Border War stand of 332 is the second highest fifth wicket partnership in Test match history. Perhaps they now wish they had, because uh, that's the end of it, a wide one. Oh, well, it was 
a big shout there and gone. Quite majestic. Yeah, perfect. Gun for it. All the way. And another one, Andy, this one's out. Paul Rifle had taken again. five wickets in his first Ashes match. The spell he's having brought up the 200 for England. Well, he stood there, but he was, <laughs> as though he couldn't believe what had happened, but uh, just the gentlest of dismissals and caught by Taylor at slip. England were out soon after the start of play on the fourth day and followed on on a pitch which was proving more and more difficult to bat on. Uh, good shot. Good contest. He's asked for the replay, and if there was a dragging there by Atherton, this is what... Uh, Umpire Barry Ledbetter is watching. That's a good shot by Hughes. Not out, not out, lad. Oh, that must be close. That's out. No shot played. Oh, isn't that rather sweet? Tim May from over the wicket. Nice. Super shot. It was a challenge. He threw it up and Gooch accepted it. And that'll be it. The half century Jeffrey Boycott was talking about and Alex Stewart was thinking about. A good knock. No move from umpire Plews. Except to say, over, but not out. Another beautiful four. A three and the one out from Murph Hughes. Brilliant catch. Brilliant, brilliant catch. Mark War, he's caught some stunners in this series, but nothing better than that. Oh, close, yes, indeed. Had to go, and that is the 200. Timely reminder that Murph Hughes needed just one. He's now got it. First ball for Martin Bignall. Hughes is the bowler. Oh, he's done it again. He's on a hat trick. And that is it. And uh, the man who most deserves to take the final catch does so. It's the Australian captain, Alan Border. The Ashes are retained. Series is one. At the end of this overwhelming victory for Australia, Alan Border is named man of the match, and to no one's surprise, Graham Gooch makes a dignified but sad resignation as captain of England.
Uh, well, I've considered it a great honour, Captain England. I've enjoyed it and things have gone well uh, on some matches. This series and this last few months haven't gone so well. But I know that uh, every time I walk on the field, I do my best and that's all I can do. Do you think it would make a difference to the England team having a new captain in charge? Um, well, a fresh ideas, fresh approach, someone else to look look up to. Um, hopefully, yes. I mean, I hope our performances improve. Of course I do. I want England to win and, uh, as I said, I think it's the best way forward. We haven't been doing well under my leadership, so, you know, it's, it's right and proper that someone else should have a go. And that someone turns out to be the 25-year-old Cambridge graduate Michael Atherton, who is appointed captain for the final two tests of the summer. For two weeks in July, eight teams competed throughout England for the Women's Cricket World Cup. On August the 1st, New Zealand, not the Australian favourites, face England in the final at Lords. Susie Kitson, in the galley, magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. The ball slanted across Kirsty Bond from Joe Chamberlain. Down Britain, yes! Mike Atherton wins the toss in his first match as England captain, and on a dry pitch apparently made for the Australian spin bowlers, he decides to bat. And he's gone, Graham Gooch. Cracking shot. It's one that Mark Ward dug in and actually stood up to be hit. Oh, that's very, very good. It's beautifully bowled by Mark Ward. He's darted that back off the seam to Robin Smith. It looked as though it came between bat and pad. It was a very good delivery. It's darted back a long way. Bivor. Yes, he's gone. Maynard has gone. That's brilliantly caught. A splendid catch by Steve War. And Tim May has struck in the first over. He's bowled. Six penalties. After a good start, there's yet another middle order collapse, and despite a good fight back from Thorpe and the recalled 40-year-old John Embry, England once again disappoint their supporters. Keeping low. It certainly did keep low. That was no more than nine inches at the stumps. Completely beat Atherton height there. Yes, it was about, uh, what I suppose, halfway at the stumps and... Uh... Well, that was what you call a pretty good delivery. First ball from Hughes at the city end, and it looks as though it's gone for four. There you go. Six runs over mid wicket. Two there, but couldn't make it. Shane Warne has got round in time, but John Embry has a half century. It's a very good innings. England were soon all out for 276, and Atherton led his team out knowing they were 100 runs short of a good total. Well, he got well forward and may well have got outside the line. Lovely shot. And Slater is gone. That spun a lot. Just managed to get the inside edge. 
Oh, look at that. Out. What turn and the benefit from bowling outside the off stump, the Australian line. There's the turn again. Everybody's uh, excited except two people, the batsman and more important, Umpire Shepherd. Oh, catch. What a catch. Peter Such has claimed the wicket of Alan Border. That was a brilliant piece of work. Terrific reflexes there from Nasser Hussain. He seemed to be late going. <laughs> Beaten in the flight there by Such. of irony about that uh, he's just given him a bit of room there it was a fraction short but three for it oh. well I think there's a bit of get out of the way our kid <laughs> after these early breakthroughs England were crucially halted by an elegant partnership from the war twins over the day and five runs have been added. Let's get him out. I don't think Steve Waugh enjoyed that. Yeah, there's a gap out on that mid-wicket boundary. <laughs> Terrific fielding from Matthew Maynard. Very subtle. well placed there's good common sense batting going on out there well that's hit him somewhere I think the inside of the right thigh which is uh, bad news it's worse when it's uh, on a cold day just inside the left thigh as well intent all ground to a halt bowled him and that's the end of it Peter Such as much a Yorker as anything which probably spun rifle goes bowled by Such for 20 and Australia finally all out 4.08 Terrific shot. Perfect, perfect placement. That's the 50 partnership. No argument about that. Just waits for a loose one. Hits it again. Places it beautifully. On the fourth morning, the torture by spin continues and the backbone of England's batting is soon broken again. Right to the pitch of that one. Oh, 
That's out. Flip up and uh, Shane Warne hasn't pitched that too many times in this series, but he's learning quickly and he's learning well. Great shot. And a message there to David Boone, short square leg, but um, a bit well to pick up the, the message that you really have to wait if possible. Oh dear, he's gone well bowled, Tim May. Beautiful bowling, really. Floated up, got the drive, that one a bit quicker. Must have gone through with the arm. Ball him. Well, well, and that is the variation that worked. It spun prodigiously from outside the leg stump where a lot of the rough is. But that went absolutely to plan. Feisty batting by young Thorpe and old Embry at least brings some relief. In the air, but through the covers. And four more for Embry. Very, very good innings. Top class cup. Didn't bounce all that high. That's the hundred pound ship. Oh, he's out. First ball from this end, and it wasn't the spin or the turn. Straight on, and John Emery tried the trusted dab down to third man. And a very fine fighting innings has come to an end. John Emery, Courtney Lee May for 37. As Embry departs, having played perhaps his last test innings, England again faced defeat. 104 partnership, Embry and Thorpe. Big appeal and given him, England have struck. Got him. Got him, and that's one for Embury, and the second wicket. Both openers gone, and now the game's on. 12 for two. Huge shout. It's two leg buys. Well, I'm silent because I'm puzzled. I just looked out. Maynard. Did I? He's a perfect example for youngsters. He's quick, he gets down low and he gets in a super position to pick it up and release it quickly. If somebody had bothered to appeal when the Boone was apparently run out, Things just might have been different. So but Boone and the thoroughbred Mark War put together another positive 100 partnership, and Australia go four up in the series. And Boone will get back there, and in fact, it's going to beat the man out on the boundary. That must have been timed brilliantly. And that's it. David Boone has made the winning hit. Not only in 1993, but also way back in 1989 on the last Ashes tour of this country. The Australian flag flies high. Hopefully it will remain the Australian flag. Mark War is named Cornhill Insurance's Man of the Match. Bowing to increasing criticism throughout the year, 
Ted Dexter announces on the 9th of August that he's standing down as chairman of the England selectors at the end of the month. In the NetWest semi-finals, Glamorgan lose to Sussex after they'd appeared to have the game won. Captain Alan Wells, with 106 not out, is the Sussex hero and man of the match. At Taunton, Somerset have earned a semi-final against Warwickshire. That irrepressible all-rounder Dermot Reeve had to leave the field with concussion, but as so often, he won in the end. Despite their defeat in the semi-final of the Nat West, Glamorgan continued to be one of the high flyers of the 1993 season. In August, they're second in the county championship and leading the Sunday League. What's the reason for this remarkable transformation in the fortunes of the Welsh county? We've uh, always felt that we had a lot of talented players down here. Um, and I think the experience that Adrian Dale and Stephen James and Robert Croft have gained over the last two or three years in the first team has certainly helped and uh, they've all matured as players, um, but we've we felt that we've, we've been on the verge of having a good side for a long time, and um, you know, we we're all determined to do well. Glamorgan have set an enterprising example by promoting themselves as an affordable family club and they've been rewarded by full grounds even for sometimes unfashionable Britannic Assurance Championship games like this one at Abergavenny's quaint attractive ground. Behind the scenes we decided to um, reduce our membership from £48 to £15 uh, to get as many people supporting Glamorgan as possible. We always felt that there was a little bit of a, a sleeping giant as far as uh, our support was concerned. So we took the fairly radical move of, of reducing the membership to £15 and uh, the players went around Wales to promote that and uh, it was very successful and um, our membership now has gone from 3000 to 10500 so we're very pleased with it. All right. With counties now allowed only one overseas cricketer per team, selecting the right player is extremely important. Courtney Walsh has done well enough to become Gloucestershire's captain. And Glamorgan's choice seems to have been an inspired one. Viv has been a, a very important sign for, for two main reasons really. We, uh, we've always been looked upon a little bit of a, as a Cinderella county and having one of the legends of, of Test cricket in our side has obviously improved our image uh, and that was very important but obviously uh, a man of that ability, um, he has qualities which could, could and have rubbed off on, on some of our younger players and um, we, we wanted to become a successful side, we wanted uh, someone who had been uh, playing in a successful side who was used to success and, and tried to rub off on, on the other people around him and um, you know, we, we feel that's happened. I think what's probably helped uh, Matthew and, and Steve Watkin this year um, is that we've actually done well as a side. We've got to the semi-final of the Nat West, uh, we're up in the running in the championship and at the moment we're at the top of the Sunday League. So it's certainly helped uh, individuals in, uh, in their quest to, to gain international honours. Morgan's Steve Watkin and Matthew Maynard are both in the England eleven for the final test. On a bone-hard pitch, Atherton wins the toss and bats. The morning session is held up for minutes while spectators sitting behind the bowler's arm at the Vauxhall end are reseated. And there's a bit of proof. At least our spectators shoved around the ground have the the pleasure of seeing the ball race in their direction. Got him again. Good shot. Oh. 
Oh, well bowled. That's the flipper. Beautifully bowled. Well, top spinner, it's certainly... And Matthew Maynard completely out of sync with that. 177 for three. Him. He stood there. What a beautifully bold leg break. And Mark Taylor, who's dropped one catch today, he didn't make any mistake there. Oh, that's a sensational catch if he hit the ball, but he stays there. Now, this is always difficult. If it hit the bat... Yeah. Good shot, too. Six. Bits of great batting today. And Stewart now is carrying the attack to the Australian at the Australian bowlers. Well, he, Stewart has always oh, been given. Stewart showed out to the umpire kitchen first ball with a second new ball. England are all out for 380, but Australia are now faced with an altogether more convincing England fast attack of Watkin, Fraser and Devon Malcolm. Outs and got him and Devon Malcolm strikes. Slater, uh, Slater in particular loves to cut and hook. And that was good bowling from Malcolm to try him out and he's got his man. Deliberately played and uh, quite close to all sorts of things. In fact, <laughs> well done. Malcolm struck again. Gooch has taken a sharp catch. It didn't go all that fast, but he didn't move, he didn't take a backward step. Take there, Stewart. And this is Angus Fraser's first ball back in Test cricket. He's bowling to Mark Taylor. Oh, a lovely shot. Over pitching. Oh, got him! Fraser strikes. What a lovely delivery. Lifted from almost nowhere. And the disconsolate war pats the pitch short of a length where it pitched, but what a delivery and what a return for Fraser. And now Australia 53 for three. Very well bowled. Fraser has done it again. Looked a good one too. Just that might just have left Steve Waugh a little. Maynard will walk in. Rifle goes for naught, and the eighth wick is down for 196. Australia increased their total to 303, giving England a first innings lead of 71. That's it for Graham Gooch. The crowd know. He'll know. And history knows now. Four runs for him. The Australians applaud. That makes Graham Gooch England's leading run scorer in Test cricket. He's done it again. It's some of the most fluent, brilliant batting you could ever wish to see. Nicely over the top of that.
Nick Merv Kitchen saying, what did he say to you, Merv? Was he nasty to you? Do you want me to uh, go and have a word with him? <laughs> Won't get that. <laughs> That's it, Graham Gooch is gone. Beautifully ball, perfectly dropped leg spinner, 79. An excellent innings by Graham Gooch. After heavy overnight rain, play starts at 1.25 on Sunday. Good stroke. Good stroke for four. Wouldn't think he's about to bowl, would you? 36 at the moment. That's a good shot. Got one on top of that one. Now oh, it's just an over a go. Would have got slightly underneath one and ran one off to slip, which might have been a catch. This time, he actually hops off the ground to get on top of it. Oh, yes, that's a full toss. Full of all the fatal things to do. It was Warren's flipper, but it didn't matter because uh, it was intercepted by the pad on the full. The LBW law actually makes provision for that. Mm. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. That's 50. England are all out for 313 in their second innings. Now he's got to 50. Australia survived some hostile overs to be one for no wicket when rain and bad light ended play 23 overs early. Huge shout, Slater can't believe it, but that's a big strike. And uh, Steve Watkins, the man, Slater just could not believe that. Made every indication that he'd left the ball alone, certainly intended to. All you can say is it's the sort of delivery we've seen bowled from this pavilion in several times in the match. Fraser got a couple of wickets with it, so did Paul Rifle. And that's out! Gone it first ball. My word, what a start. Walking on a hat trick. Padding up, no shot. Boone looks. Umpire Mayer says you've got to go. Oh, done him. Three for him. Well, well, well. 30 for three. And all three to Steve Watkin. Taylor now gone for eight. Beautiful stroke. Perfect selection of what to play at and what to leave alone so far from Alan Border. And a shout and a goal. That's gone up in the air. A big chase for it. Matthew Maynard catches it. A really good catch. So Maynard turns now and runs back. Alex Stewart sets off first, but of course Maynard is the the man on the move. That's Maynard, and that little bit is Viv Richards. <laughs> oh, that's brilliantly bowled. Great Yorker, first up from Devon Malcolm. Well, that's the first good Yorker I've seen him bowl in a considerable time at uh, the bowling crease in this match and it was a cracker it's got it caught and bowled Fraser has done it he's broken that partnership after 
Rifle and War Nevada 74. Big Billy's given in, that's it. Fraser's done it, and England win their first test match against Australia in 18 attempts, and their first one against anybody since Headingley last year. Fraser the man. Atherton, successful captain in only his second test match. The drought has been broken. Angus Fraser is made man of the match for his eight wickets on his welcome return to test cricket after a serious injury. Shane Warne is Australia's man of the series, and Graham Gooch, bloody but unbowed, wins England's award. Before autumn has tinted the St John's Wood trees, Middlesex have wrapped up the county championship. This is the seventh time in 18 years that they've won the most prized county competition. What's the secret of their success? I think a lot of it comes, comes really down to the all-round talent that we've got in the side. We've got a well-balanced bowling attack. We've got a lot of depth in our batting, a lot of quality batsmen. Um, but in particular, I think we've, we've got two really good spinners to exploit four-day cricket. And I think that's one of the, um, one of the important aspects of, of, of the four-day game now, is sides having a balanced attack. How important has um, Mike Gatting's captaincy been, in your opinion? Well, obviously very vital. I mean, he's been doing the job now for 11 years, and he's led a successful side from that first year that he captained. Um, and he's gone from strength to strength. He's mellowed a heck of a lot from when he first took over. Um, but I think one of the great things is he's got the respect of the players, plus his tactical know-how and, and the changing situations of a match. Um, it's probably as good as anyone in the country, if not better. It may be a bit of a cliché, but Middlesex's success has been essentially a team effort. Well, we've got a happy dressing room, but we've also, we were also quite argumentative as well, um, which is not a bad thing because we vent our feelings when you have them, and um, it, it, it's good to air them rather than to brood on them for days, days on end. Um, so we sort, of, we sort things out very quickly. Um, we've got a good blend of youth and experience in the side, which you get young players coming up to the older players and ask them about this, and you get advice offered by the elder players to the younger players, but it, 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 it's a good mix. Angus Fraser's comeback had at times seemed very remote, so when it did arrive, it was doubly welcome. And we really felt that he was coming on in Sunday league games when he had the new ball, and all of a sudden he came and he was hitting the wicketkeeper's gloves, and it was sort of getting to the, the chest of the wicketkeeper. We thought, by me, he's actually hitting the deck and getting the ball to go through. And all of a sudden, um, I got stated to play in a test match, and then Angus got seven for 40 against um, Leicestershire. And the boy said he got pace and bounce, and really, I think he'd turned the corner. Um, a few weeks earlier, but I think the wickets really helped to give him confidence, and he's come in and bowled really well ever since. But, I mean, a, a fit Angus means a successful Middlesex and hopefully a successful England side. Middlesex owe a great deal to John Embry, who's had a magnificent all-round season in the year he celebrates his 41st birthday. When so many players seem to find playing such a grind, how does he maintain his undimmed enthusiasm? I don't know. I mean. I want I just go out there and I want to take wickets, I want to score runs and I want to take catches. I think that's what it's all about. But it's also the friendships that you make up um, throughout all the years of playing on the circuit with players from other counties and you only see them perhaps once a year and it's good to get together and you have a little drink after the game and I think that's really a, a lot of it, the enjoyment of actually playing the game and meeting the players that you're playing against. The two club cricket finals are played at Lords at the end of August. Old Hill from Birmingham win the national knockout, while the Herefordshire club Kington win the village competition off the last ball in a pulsating final. Alan Wells wins the toss and, against tradition and statistics, decides to bat first in the final of the NatWest Trophy. 
was a thumping shot, but uh, it's played off the front foot. It's extraordinary to see someone leaping onto the front foot, whacking across the line, especially when the bowler is a tall seam bowler who played, who's played for England. Oh, the footwork is, uh, is inch perfect. What a shot! How many times have we seen a virtually a straight six in the first hour of a Mac West final? Well, that's a colossal blow, my word. made in that West final. The others, Jeffrey Boycott, Clive Lloyd, Vivian Richards. A record score for a Lord's final. Warwickshire then get off to a calamitous start. Caught him. Moles is gone, bottom edge. Now Warwickshire in real trouble. That's nice placement. I have that man. Very fine. Oh dear. Well, that's uh, very interesting. We'll have another look at that. Uh, the question is if uh, Franklin Stevenson had his hand over the rope, if it stayed over the rope when he picked up the ball. Now, there's the hand. Now, up comes the hand. Ah. I think Franklin might have been hardly done by that. A good shot. Great save. Greenfield. for Asif Din. Could be out, Spate, got him! Gosh, how would he see that in the background? That was brilliantly done. Very well bowled, Ed Giddens certainly made his debut a couple of years ago. He's now bowled 12 overs for 57. And one wicket, that sounds expensive, but that was a very, very good over. Big problem, it's a big ground now. After it is six, it's difficult. So you've got to get a couple of boundaries. Big hit. Wonderful strike. Wonderful shot from Dermot Reeve. You've got to believe that wickets do make a difference in this match yet as well. Blistering stroke. It's gone through extra cover. It's in the air, and it's safe. Warwickshire have won a famous victory here at Lord's. Warwickshire complete an astounding victory in Stygian gloom with the former Lord's ground staff boy Asif Din pipping Reeve for the individual prize. On September the 19th, Glamorgan can confirm their rating as team of the season. The final game against Kent at a full animated St Lawrence ground at Canterbury will decide which of them are champions of the AXA Sunday League. Such a match provides a fitting stage for Viv Richards to make probably his final exit. This could well be the end of 
his professional career. And what a scene set for him, which to bow out. He's always been a big man occasion, of course. And a standing ovation here for him. Oh, he's got his whip out. In fact, well, that could be it, it's going down, it's four. And Glamorgan have won the Sunday League for the first time in their history. Look at Viv Richards. Thank you, many congratulations. A marvellous end to a great season. If anyone was going to write a fairy story, it would be the certain gentleman standing behind you would be there at the finish. Yeah. That's right, I mean, he's played so many great innings over a great career and um, we just felt he had one up his sleeve and uh, he did. He saved it for today. Viv, so many championships, so many medals, so many triumphs. How does this one rate? Well, because of uh, we have been such a fancy team over the years, you know, I think that um, to have won something, you know, this time, it's uh, just ever so pleasing. What I, what I feel pleased about, not just maybe for our team, but uh, all the wonderful people who have travelled so far. Thank you. It's not surprising in the season in which Australia so convincingly defended the Ashes that the 1993 WH Smith 11 includes seven of the tourists. The 11 are Slater, Gooch, Boone, Richards, Mark Waugh, Border, Healy, Embury, Warne, Hughes and Watkin.